So good to have you back again, Aquarius. Uh, it's May 2016. You probably already know that. I'm Didici from astrology.com.au. And as I was just about to start talking about your 11th house and fulfillment and all that sort of stuff, I sort of remember the story of my first spiritual teacher. This was some 30 years ago. He's a very intuitive master. Uh, he was approached uh, one day by one of the students who had spent some time with him and he had decided he was going to go back to, uh, to Australia. As he approached the teacher, you know, he was packed and ready to go. As he approached the teacher, the teacher said to him, you mustn't leave, uh, you should stay another week. He said, but I've got business to do, teacher. And uh, the teacher said, no, I command you to stay. Anyhow, um, in the tradition, uh, you don't disobey the teacher. So he you know, changed his flights and decided to stay. He was a little bit upset, obviously, because uh, that meant changing all his plans in Australia and uh, maybe even missing out on a business opportunity or two. Would you believe the uh, plane crashed? Everyone on board that flight was killed. Um, everyone was stunned, uh, not the least of him, because he realised at that moment that the teacher's awareness was pretty on the money there and that there was some very important reason for him being spared. The teacher didn't always do that. But how does this relate to you? Well, sometimes we think the inconveniences in life the problems that we experience, as you're seeing there with one of your ruling planets, Saturn, and Mars moving through the 11th house of life fulfillment, stifling you, frustrating you, making you feel that everything's against you, that actually, like the story, the things that are happening in your life really are absolutely perfect. And the thought that it's anything otherwise is only going to create more resistance, pressure, anxiety, and suffering. And that really is the principle of this conjunction of Mars and Saturn. In this 11th house, of course you've been obstructed, stifled, frustrated, but there's a reason for that. And you need to look more deeply into what's going on in your life right now. Stop looking at the superficial level of what's going on in your life. Take a closer look at the reasoning why things are abstracted, why things are taking longer. There's a perfection in the blossoming of your life, Aquarius. And once you start to understand that, you'll relax. <laughs> you start to just go along with the flow for the ride. It doesn't mean giving up. It just means being really attentive to every moment and understanding what's going on and how you can work in with that to maximize the potential of your life. Now, there are three planets right now moving in the fourth house of your horoscope. Fortunately, this is going to offset some of those frustrations that I'm talking about. And on the seventh, we see that lovely new moon, which is actually going to give you an opportunity to, I suppose, reignite that love of self and that ability to flow with what's going on in nature in your life. Venus, very friendly planet for you, is also moving through this sector. So this fourth house is domesticity. It's the family. It's the home. It's your inner heart as well. So once this new moon occurs on the 7th, and then also the forward motion of Jupiter on the 9th, see a couple of days there, lots of things will start to shift. A bigger shift later in the month on the 22nd, when Mercury, another favourable planet for you, moves direct. And coincidentally, on the same day as the full moon takes place in your 11th house, where those frustrating planets are, you'll see another shift, another lift, moving you forward towards those goals. So why resist all this is my question. Resistance is not going to help. Worry is not going to help. It's about slipping into this flow and just allowing things to happen as they will and using those frustrations, the downtimes, the uh, 
the failures, if you will, as moments of uh, clarity and building blocks. Edison was uh, being awarded, I don't know what it was, an award for his great invention of the electric light bulb. It was interesting to see him get up and you know, accept that award, but he, you know, he, he sort of uh, said to everyone there that you know, this one success that everyone was giving him the accolades for was the tip of the iceberg because underneath that success, that success of creating the light bulb were a thousand failed experiments. So that's the persistence side of things that you do have. You being the fixed sign of Aquarius, you're a very persistent person. But you mustn't let these failures or these drawbacks hold you from the success that's imminent. And I think that's the theme of your reading this month, if I could end on that note, that it is positive even if you think it's not and that the full moon after the 22nd is going to bring with it some renewed vigour to uh, move forward and see that whatever's happened prior to this moment has all been beautifully planned in a strange sort of way to uh, elevate you to the best that you can be. I'd like to pick that up again next month. Hope you'll join me. In the meantime, do pop into astrology.com.au. You can take a closer look at what's happening to you. Uh, there with your daily and even your yearly readings, a lot of free readings. And for those of you wanting a more personalized service, I'm there to give you a free, well, not a free reading. If you want a bit of a free reading, we can have a talk on the phone. But you can also have a full consultation with me. And along with our other practitioners, you can make the choice. We'd be more than happy to help you. Till next month, take care. Bye-bye.